Mount Verde Academy, please join me in welcoming Mrs. Lee Tran. Surround your life with positive people, with inspirational people, and that will excel your life. Why did I say that? Because my life is the direct result of those collective inspirations that I surround myself with, and you will be just as well. Good morning, teachers, faculties, and students of Monverse Academy. What a beautiful sight. I grew up in school uniform, and so is my son. So this is a beautiful, nostalgic feeling that I haven't experienced for a while. Thank you for having me here to honor the Women's History Month and also to give me the opportunity to share my story with you. Now, I am the eldest of five children in a, was born in Vietnam. I grew up very well protected and nurture environment just like you. I went to a private school in a prosperous Chinese community. When I, um, when 1975, when North Vietnam invaded and took over South Vietnam, there's a lot of changes in my life after that. You see, the new communist government turned against its Chinese immigrants, and my family is Chinese. So the oppression and discrimination at that point was really palpable. My family's business was confiscated. My home was ransacked. And many people in the neighborhood disappeared in the middle of the night, and no one dared to ask any questions. So in those hopelessness situations, my parents had no choice but to fled Vietnam. Things have changed quite a bit since, but that was the, the situation back then. So if you don't know much about Vietnam, um, I have a little map up there, I'm sure you do know. So one clear evening in May of 1979, my family embarked on this eight meter wide, 28 meter length wooden boat. We would jam pack of 502 people on board. And my family of seven were included in that boat. We sailed out to the international water in the Gulf of Thailand. Under a dark sky with enormous of fear, we felt like an orphanage, homeless, countryless. We had no idea what's going to be our future. So the boat that you just seen is not my boat. It's just a representation of what it looks like. People are crowded sitting back to back, and they have nothing but fear as their belonging. 
So the next day, when we're out in the vast open sea, someone spotted a moving object from a distance, and we were so excited. We were chasing after that boat, hoping that they're going to rescue us. But when we got closer, they jumped into our boat with guns. We had no idea we were chasing after pirates. Now, right, they rob everything they can find on us, and to sentence us to a quicker death, they destroy all the food and water supplies. And the next following days, and the next following days, we encounter three more rounds of pirates, and each time, the wound got deeper and the terrors got deeper because there was nothing else for them to rob. So by the fifth day, the boat was stranded with a broken engine. People are lying lifeless, drifting in without any directions. At one point, I was drifting in and out of consciousness and I was extremely thirsty. So I grab a mug nearby and crawl over somebody to the edge of the boat, trying to scoop out some water from the sea to drink. Now, if you are in the stage of a lethargic, lethargic, trust me, you have a gulf of seawater, it will wake you up. It was not fun. So the journey, just keep going on for two more days. And luckily, we get saved by an oil rig in the middle of the ocean. And somehow, seven days of that boat trip still linger in my mind until the day I die. I will never forget. And the seven months following in the harsh condition in the refugee camp in Indonesia, super crowded. Now, some night I'm still waking up feeling that fear and that stench from the boat, from all the vomit and the, the raw humanity. It just did not go away and fear just grab onto me and I couldn't let go. So if you want to know more about my story, it is on the TEDx talk, under TEDx Eustace, and just search my name and um, look for I did not miss the boat. So trauma and fear like that had held me back. I was afraid of doing things. I was afraid of risk. I was afraid of being visible. I was 16 and 17, just like you are now at one point, coming to this country, brand new, didn't speak the language. Culture is shock. Everything is different. Compound with the fear, I withdraw. I didn't really excel myself. I held back. I wish, I wish I could be brave back then. I wish that I could get inspiration from my friends, my classmates, my teacher. It would have helped me tremendously to grow a lot faster. But you see, I gave myself permission because I thought, I'm nobody. I'm lucky to be here. And that just wrong. But luckily, I'm a late bloomer. Better late than never, right? So in my adult life, I'm starting to excel out a little bit in college, I surround myself with people that who inspire me. 
and out of college, when I have surrounded my friend, my coworker, it really boosts my self-esteem. And I think it's better too because when my English vocabulary is established more, my self-confidence grew a little more. So I want to tell you that sometime, if you are in a new situation, if you are in the strange place, it's easy for you to sit back and say, "I don't want to be part of it because it's much safer to stay where you're not being seen or heard." But the truth is, you are making a world of different. By just learning from people around you, or even just be yourself and inspire other. And it took me a long time to learn. And one of my friend, I will always remember, she said, "Don't do things because you're afraid. I mean, do things. Hold on. <laughs> do the thing that scare you, but don't do it for no reason." Do the things that scare you, but excite you, and it will change your life to the point that you cannot afford not to do it. And it took me a long time to get that. You know, my English wasn't good enough. Remember, <laughs> so it took me a while to understand. Yes, if you have a purpose, if you have a goal, if you have. A desire to do something that you know is going to change your life, so bad, but you're so scared. So it's a good scary thing. Do it. Be that inspiration. Be your fuel to challenge you to fuel your action. Now I'm going to tell you two short story about my son and my nephew who still inspire me. You guys are all the inspiration here. You just don't know that. But a doll can look at you and learn a lot from you. I know I learn a lot from my kids and my、uh, nephew and nieces, younger generation. So my son, who is just recently graduated from college a year or so ago, when he was in high school, he wanted to go to a missionary with the school for a month in Panama and in Peru. And being a tiger mom, I like to nurture him in the nice environment, protected environment. And coming from the third world, I know how rough the condition would be for him. So, in a good way, yes, I want him to go. But in the reserve way, I rather not. I rather him go and serve us somewhere a little safer. But with his tenacity, he. Prevail, and he went, and come out of it. He excels so much, and with that, he carry on to college with that experience. So he explore another further by staying in staying in Mexico for a year, six months education and six months working there. Now he has to go on his own to look for housings, to look for job, but it's an opportunity to grow, and he inspired me so much that he's willing to do that. Coming just like you in a nice, well-protected environment. So the next one is my nephew Wesley. Now Wesley is a high school senior at this moment. He will graduate in May, in June, like some of you. He is in the exploration on his quest of college. He applied to NYU Shanghai and got accepted. My sister just called me the other day and say. Can you talk to Wesley? He's gonna leave home for the next four years, going to Shanghai. 
Now, mind you, my nephew is MIA, born in America, a hundred percent. Almost American. He doesn't speak a phrase of Chinese. Never been to China, and have not even visited the school. And if you know Wesley, he's a very homebound person. When he was young, he come to my home, stay overnight. He have to bring a picture of his mom. And before he go to bed, he will look at the picture, and then put it in his chest and cry, and then look at the picture. And cry. He could not stay away for a night or uh, a long day. But now he want to travel to the the other side of the globe for straight three or four years. So I asked Wesley, "Why do you want to go so far? We came from all the way the other side over here. You could go for a year of exchange student." You don't need to go all four years, and his answer is, "I have been sheltered all my life. This is the time that I want to explore." What an answer! Wesley is my newfound inspiration for courage, and I. I am learning every day from you kids. You guys are brave to be here. Now, when Mrs. Meyer told me that Mount Verde Academy have 92 country represented in its student bodies, I was shocked. From impressive, I am so proud to see such a diversity. In this little Mount Verde, in the middle of Central Florida, this is incredible. You should be so proud. Now, from from whatever the whole entire speech, if you could remember one thing, I am speaking from a former refugee, from a foreign student standpoint, from a mom. From an adult, I encourage you to step out of your comfort zone and to inspire people, your friends, your classmates, or even get inspiration from them. Because you're such a rich body here, you have bring different background, different culture, different language. Everything is so uniquely. Of your own that you can share, and it's just that is just beautiful, and I really encourage you to do that. Be that inspiration to your friend. Now, Oprah have said that surround yourself with people who can lift you up. If they can't lift you up, at least they can inspire you. That's what my thought is, because those inspirations are the food that fed your soul and bring you to the next level of success. And we need you as our next generation to take over this, to to lead our country, to lead the world to a better place. And I thank you so much for having me here. Thank you, Lee. We really appreciate you coming out.、And、on behalf of Montverde Academy, we just have a small token of our appreciation. We do appreciate you sharing your story, and I would encourage you all to watch her TEDx talk.、Uh, we'll make sure we get the links posted on Schoology today, so you can hear the whole story of her her adventure、um, fleeing from Vietnam. It's a great inspirational story for sure. Thank you.